everyone. I'm, I'm Lucy. Um, I believe it is customary right now to say that I'm delighted to be here, but I am experiencing mind-altering amounts of jet lag, so I actually don't know if I'm coming or going. But luckily for you, I do know why I'm here a very long way from home. I'm here to talk about the Nature Tech Market Report that we released earlier today. It's a joint effort between Nature for Climate, of which I'm chair, and a Paris-based VC firm called Serena, and the MRV Collective, many of whom are in the room with us here today, I believe. So can we have a shout out for the MRV Collective, if you're in here? Excellent. It's always good to perform to a home crowd, so I'm very pleased with that. So, um, what am I going to talk about in the next eight minutes? So I'm basically going to talk a little bit about what Nature Tech is, the numbers, i.e. the investment trends that we've seen. I'll touch on the risks and safeguards needed, and a little bit on the outlook of the market. Before I get into that, just a little bit of background on Nature for Climate. So we've been campaigning for nature as a climate solution for the last seven years, trying to land the message that nature is a third of the solution needed by 2030. And we've grown from five original founding organizations to the 22 you see behind me today. And our tracking data tells us that awareness levels for nature-based solutions has risen from less than 1% when we started to more than 20% today. And also, and importantly, that funding levels are beginning to rise for nature-based solutions, but nowhere near to the amount needed as we've been hearing from our other speakers. So what is nature tech? Well, I'm gonna do a very quick very unscientific poll here about nature tech. So if you can cast your mind back two years, put your hand up if you have ever heard of nature tech. Yeah, not many of you. I'm pleased to see not many of you. Good. Okay, and after the last couple of days, if you could put your hand up if you think you work in a nature tech related sector or your company needs to use nature tech in the future. Excellent. This is visible evidence of a growing market. If I'd have realized this, we could have just done this experiment and saved a lot of time and money on doing the report, but we are where we are. So what is nature tech? Well, until recently, it was a, considered a subsector of climate tech. Um, but it, it extends beyond that, and nowadays can be considered its own investment category. At Nature for Climate, we originally defined nature tech in quite a narrow way on technology that can accelerate and scale up nature-based solutions. But we've expanded that definition to include a broad range of environmental challenges, such as deforestation, soil degradation, water pollution, species loss. And these seven categories that you see behind me are the areas that are now attracting investment interest and demand for services. So during Bloom, you will have heard of uh, examples of high impact nature tech applications from the pioneers that are developing them. So one of the most in demand is the combination of geospatial analysis, digital tools and AI being used for project origination and MRV. So this is being used by companies such as Space Intelligence, Pachama, Cultivo, Chloris Geospatial. It's a very long list because these are game changer technologies that can transform how we measure carbon and biodiversity impact. Elsewhere, companies like Land Life and Flying Forests are developing planting innovation technologies such as smart coated seeds or automated planting vehicles that can help accelerate and increase survival rates of important restoration projects around the world. Another example is coming out of the Crowther Lab in Switzerland where they are aiming to develop the first biodiversity index. So it will collapse 400 data sets into one single measurement that should be used to measure the state of nature's complexity, and it's called SEED. So what do the numbers in the report tell us? 
Well, as you all know, or at least the people next door at Verge know, there's been huge growth in climate tech. So it's gone from $413 million 10 years ago to $40 billion today. By comparison, the nature tech market is still relatively small. The numbers tell us that the accumulated VC investment in nature tech is around $7.5 billion today, with two thirds of that funding coming from the US market. This slide shows you the growth from $1 billion in 2018 to $1.6 billion today, with a peak of $2.4 billion. And it's worth noting that the overall VC market declined considerably during this time, minus 50%, according to Crunchbase, whereas the nature tech market declined by only 35%. So which of the areas, seven areas are attracting the most investment? Not surprisingly, food and ag is the biggest with more than $5 billion. MRV, the second with $1.23 billion. And MRV is experiencing really strong momentum. So of all the early stage funding numbers, that is the only one in achieving year on year increases over the last five years. But you also see that there are areas that remain seriously underinvested, like water conservation and management and biodiversity restoration. So what about risks? It's essential as we grow the nature tech market that we weigh up the risks and put in place safeguards. So one example here, particularly with regard to indigenous peoples, who are the guardians of the ecosystems where this tech is being applied and deployed. So for example, the use of drones can often take away jobs from indigenous people, but it doesn't have to be that way. And our report provides examples of where the power of indigenous knowledge is being combined with these emerging technologies. Another example is from Carbon Tanzania, where tech's being used to keep project developers accountable. So here they've transformed an app called Sensing Clues that was actually developed to monitor wildlife crime, but can also track a community-first-led approach to projects. So what is the future outlook for nature tech? Well, I think as we've heard today, there will be new global actors in this decarbonized and nature positive economy. And those actors will rely on climate and nature technologies. So nature tech is a new frontier that will scale rapidly and hopefully reach the same levels of maturity and scale as climate tech. And so lastly, how can you get involved? Well, download the report from the Nature for Climate website and a QR code that does work somewhere, even though it's not here. But if you go to the website, you can download the report and join our nature tech movement. We learned with our nature-based uh, solutions movement that every, every movement needs a home. And I hope that Bloom has become that home for the nature tech ecosystem. So finally, I'd just like to say thank you. Firstly, thank you to Bloom for, in the words of ABBA, taking a chance on me, very grateful. Secondly, I'd like to thank the 50 plus contributors to the Nature Tech Report and all the Nature Tech innovators that I've met, that met this week who aren't in the report. But thirdly, I'd like to pay a very special personal thank you to somebody I met at Bloom for the first time yesterday who transformed my own worldview and how I think about my work. So when I was consulting this person on the very important topic of what outfit and shoes to wear on stage today, they put reply to me rather bluntly. They described their family and they told me about their two girls, a six-year-old and a 10-year-old. And they said, and I'm paraphrasing for decency reasons, in 30 years' time, do you think my kids, when they're dealing with the state of the planet, are going to give a damn about what shoes you wore on stage at Bloom? So I thank her very much for the renewed level of clarity in my work. So thank you for listening.